Thought I'd show you the chassis of one of these black and white TVs I have. I worked on. This is a 8T241 RCA. This one. black and white TV. You see I've added a fuse to it. I ginned up this CRT mount. This clearly is not original. Usually you get kind of fiber band or something like that. The deal is on this particular chassis it wasn't designed for the CRT to be mounted to it. It was supposed to be mounted in the wood frame. The wood frame was toast. It was basically eaten away by termites completely gone so I just keep this one out and show off every once in a while I want to show people uh, you know all the tubes glowing all that kind of cool stuff I worked on this TV some time ago I don't remember all the details to it but I think one of my one of the things I did here was I wanted to uh, demonstrate how they can operate even with the old original caps. A lot of people like to replace these capacitors right off the bat. I don't do that unless I have a problem with one of them. I'm not saying they're wrong to replace them. I'm just saying that frequently these capacitors work just fine as is, even if they're really old. A friend of mine who thinks that's due to the uh, old school caps having old school PCBs and that well, makes them very stable so perhaps that's why these things frequently last work just fine anyway here it is I'm gonna flip it up now so you see the speaker is just the other coil speaker and just plug in here I'll disconnect that I'll turn the chassis up on its end so you can see the uh, underside work here on the next picture all right, here's the underside of the chassis. As you can see, I recapped it. I just kind of used up the remaining of my yellow Chinese caps. I typically don't use those because I'm not too sure about the quality of them sometimes. But anyway, oh wow, look at that. I actually left the black beauty in there. That's that black and red cap. Uh, I can see where I clipped it. I probably clipped it, tested and tested good, and I'll leave a cap in there if it tests like new. I'm not hardcore about replacing everything, especially if it tests fine. But there was probably one of the few that were, that were left in. You still, I, still, I still have some of the domino caps in there. Um, again, they would have been checked out, tested, and if they tested fine, they, uh, they were left in. Um, there's an old domino cap there right there you see that joint right there that's where I would have cut it tested it and put it back in fact if I don't if I'm not mistaken it doesn't like my kind of work um, I have a feeling that might have been done before me somebody had already cut it out and tested it and I no doubt would have cut out and tested it as well uh, here's the I hope I'm not putting any pressure on the other side of that transformer there's a uh, the oscillator coil. I got a new uh, cap across it. I think that's the sine wave adjusting side of it. Uh, I had some problems with uh, with sinks that holding, and that was some of these caps in here were bad. They had to be replaced. Uh, I see. I have more domino caps. Again, test. Okay, leave them be. Um, Let's see, anything else here? Here's another old domino cap. All the IF string has its original domino caps. Uh, original electrolytic. I unsoldered each one of those. Reformed this cap over a couple of days by slowly upping the DC voltage to it until it, the leakage was, uh, was no longer a problem. This one happened to come back just fine, as did all these. I On each one of these, I disconnected the cap and then tested it reformed it slowly it came back they work fine uh, let's see here I don't think there's enough light here to get this but I still see a dominoes left near this the vertical integrator circuit 
This, this uh, series of caps and resistors basically integrates the vertical pulses into one pulse to trigger the uh, vertical oscillator. Uh, let's see, got an orange drop in there. So it's got a little bit of hodgepodge stuff. Again, I only replaced caps that were bad. and So most of these were originally wax paper caps, but all the others tested fine. The only mod I did to the entire set this thing even has its original. Wow, that's pretty good. Remember that. This back here, this metal here. Let's go to the other side now. Right there. That's the uh, main power resistor. And surprisingly, it looks like it's good. Oh, wait a minute. I see one's been disconnected. I can't see it, but there has been a, a wire disconnected up in there. One of the sections must have been dead. And let's see, that means I would have had to wire it up some way to get around that. Uh, I don't see a power resistor stuck in here anywhere. Unless it must be these here, but I don't know, I just don't remember how that worked. Perhaps that is it. It might have been that, uh, let me take a look. Oh, that one's, oh, I take it back. That one is still wired in. It's take, I take it back. That one's wired in. It's good. So this entire, this whole resistor, which frequently fails, it shorts to a chassis, is fine. So I left it alone. These, the story behind these two sand resistors is, this is the main output from the B-plus from the 5U4 rectifier tube. And if you look closely, this brown wire right here, which has a little bit of a, uh, shrink wrap on it used to go from the cathode of that rectifier out to this filter where this red wire is now well the red wire is that fuse so that fuse is connected here comes back up comes this terminal strip and I used to have this brown wire tack that terminal strip that's how I originally put the fuse in uh, the two resistors were put in Basically, as dropping resistor. Let me see how many ohms there. They're not very large resistors. Okay, uh, 50 ohms. I think that might be a total of about 100 ohms there. And what's going on is I'm dropping the B plus through those resistors to feed the set with a reduced B plus because the line voltage here tends to be upwards of 125 volts plus and this thing was originally spec'd out to run at about 100 probably anywhere from 105 to 117 volts so the high b plus just puts out you know too, too much of a uh, too much of a strain on the rest of the system but the increased voltage causes all the tubes to pull more current because of the uh, higher voltage on their plates and I decided I would just drop the voltage here. This also made setting the width a lot easier because it was had too much width before, um, too much deflection width. Uh, sometimes it works the opposite way. Too much high voltage can be high. We can actually reduce the width, but whatever. Um, by putting these resistors in here, it dropped the voltage down to the spec voltage in the B plus, whatever that was. I don't remember off the top of my head. And uh, it still works. It still has plenty of brightness. Everything works as it should. So basically, I left. I set the B plus up to what it should have been. Uh, true, if the higher voltage at the line means there might be a slightly higher voltage at the filaments, but since you have a dropping ratio from you know 110 volts on the 6.3, uh, that's not going to be that much higher. A lot of people say, well, you could have just put a bucking transformer in there or something else to accommodate said name. Yes, but then I have to carry around a bucking transformer with me everywhere I go. Or I have to uh, put one in the line somewhere or attach it to the chassis. Blah, 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 blah. It's a lot easier just to drop the B plus right across here and leave the fill level just a little bit higher. Also, if the CRT is a little bit weak, which frequently they are, dropping your, your filament voltage through the bucking transformer isn't going to help things either. So. Basically, I leave the filament voltages where they are, maybe a little bit plus. I didn't check to see, but you know, maybe a little bit more at 6.3. But this drops the B plus down to where it should be. I did leave the brown wire here with that's why I left the shrink wrap. 
If anybody ever wanted to return it, it's real clear. The brown wire goes to this same terminal. That's why I wrapped it around there. Get these three resistors out of here, you're good to go. If you don't like my fuse, I left the brown wire long enough. It goes from here to here. You can just bypass the fuse, although I wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, uh, n n pretty unremarkable other than that. The set worked fine. You know, it had to had to go through the whole oscillator setup. I think the I think the biggest problem I had was this transformer had been replaced at some point by some incorrect part. I don't know what was going on. It was completely the wrong transformer. I opened it up and somebody had hogged it up, tried to connect wires up. It was just a mess. Um, I had no beep. I had no high voltage. I got it, the correct transformer in, installed it, and then everything was fine after that. Anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, set this back up, and we'll turn it on and check out the picture. Okay, let's turn it on. Let's see what happens. This is what I'm talking about, the glow, the glowage of the tubes. You know, I especially like it when the kids come over, my teenager friends, or my kids can over and never seen a tube before. It's kind of cool. Seeing all the tubes glowing. There we go. <laughs> Looks like we have a Bob Newhart show, maybe? Oh yeah, there's Emily. Well, that's all right, dear. Practice did make perfect. You almost got it right. <laughs> The, uh, this is masked off with a rectangular mask. That's why the screen is cut off from top and bottom. But there you have it. I can just get fine tuning. Well, that's not exactly funny. Don't. <laughs> I've got a, I don't have the proper aerial on it. So you need to be a tenor on it. You know, Sonny would never touch Stu when he was a child. Oh, no. He'd wait until I wasn't looking and he'd scoop it into his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was a scamp, all right. I remember this one is, time in This is receiving an over the air transmission from a modulator through. That little antenna wire right yeah, there. Like <laughs> well, I anyway, can't see on my way. I'm there it is. If I'm going to find that motel in the dark. Oh, Mom, I don't want to hear anything. The picture's not that great because of the poor no, I don't want to the motel signal. I've got I RF noise the from the computer. I knew, Howard, but our house is being painted. How would you been to Mom's house? Oh, you mean the one that needed painting? But, uh, this will run, you know, for hours and nothing gets hot. Uh, here's your capacitors. They'll get warm, but I don't know if that's from, from uh, heating up from these tubes that are surrounding them or some leakage. I mean, it probably could use new caps. We really want to run it for hours on end and be stone reliable. That would probably be a good idea, but I got that fuse right there. If those caps ever short out, that fuse will pop. It's pretty, um, it's pretty conservative. I think I have a, like a uh, 250 milliamp fuse in there, and I think it generally pulls about 200 milliamp. So it wouldn't take much to make it pop. Those filters ever did go bad. Anyway, there it is. That's the RCA black and white set. Uh, I really don't. <laughs> I really am kind of don't want to put it in a cabinet because I think it's kind of cool just the way it is. Just have it out there. I wouldn't even mind mounting on a wood base and maybe putting a kind of cover over it to keep prying in. I mean, there's not much that can hurt you unless you really get a hold of that anode or foolishly sure remove those caps. They, they are they have potential on the cans. You don't want to do that. Anyway, let's get another picture of it all the way around. It's really pretty at night. I like to just turn it on at night when it's, the room's dark and tons of tubes glowing. Oh, it's kind of neat too, is you can because it hasn't got an aluminized screen, you can see it from behind like that. I always thought that was kind of cool. This um, what this is the one I did the dag on? No, no, this got the original dag. One of these. I don't think it's this set. I replaced a DAG on it that had chipped off with some uh, graphite paint called slip tape. I think this has got the original DAG on it. What I've not seen 
piece of grounding wire for that dag. I'm going to look into that. That's not very smart. Anyway, I'll double check that. There you go.